Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, and the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. With you. Let us pray. <coughs> o Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know thy Son Jesus Christ to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leadeth to eternal life, through the same thy Son Jesus Christ our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, 
in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, 
show us the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. But now the shadow of the cross is falling. And um, the disciples still can't quite see it coming. But Jesus is beginning to talk to them about it. He's beginning to prepare them for the, the passion, and the trial, the passion, the crucifixion, and the resurrection. They'll understand almost nothing of it until after the resurrection. But as he talks to them in this somber way, the mood is shifting from the high of the entry, um, their fervent expectations for the restoration of their nation, and the very human uh, desire for glory and honor and success, and they feel it slipping away from them. And the mood now is danger, anxiety. Jesus is saying to them, I'm going now, and you're not going to be able to come with me. Peter protests. He says, Lord, I'll go with you anywhere. I'll lay down my life for you. And Jesus says to Peter, Peter, tonight before the cock crows uh, twice, you will deny me, three times. So he continues to explain to them and they are troubled indeed. And he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. And then he says, believe in God and believe also in me. Don't, do not let your hearts be troubled, believe in God. Now this is a quote from the scripture. Uh, Jesus is quoting his namesake. Uh, Jesus, Yahshua, um, the leadership of Israel, is taken away from Moses because of a lack of trust. The people, the people 
have a failure of trusting God. And Moses has a failure of trusting God. And because of that, the, Moses doesn't get to go into the promised land with the people. And the leadership of Israel is given over to Joshua. God saves. God has rescued them from slavery. He's given them a new and a holy way of life. He's sustained them day by day in the desert. And now he's brought them to the, to the, to the brink of the promised land. They're, they're right on the bank of the Jordan River. He's made a way out of no way at the Red Sea. He's going to make a way out of no way again at the, at the Jordan River. And they're going to have to cross over in faith. They're going to have to cross over in trust. And Joshua says them, to, to them, let not your hearts, they're worried about the giants in the land, and you know, and Joshua says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Now Jesus says, as they stand on the bank of another Jordan River, the, 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 the Jordan River that they all know of is a figure. It has a history, it has a story. God let his people um, out of the desert into the promised land. And now they, they stand on the edge of another Jordan River. We remember that he began his ministry in the Jordan River. He went down under the waters of the Jordan, and when he came out, the heavens opened, and the dove came down, and the voice was heard, this is, is my son. And he's made that water a means by which we can have our sins washed away and live in him so that he can live in us. But now another meaning of the Jordan River is being revealed. He, has a, he, says, he says in the Gospel of John, he says, I have a bapti baptism to be baptized with, how I am constrained until it takes place. The... Uh, the, the, the river that he has to go under, the, the waters that he has to be immersed in, they're the waters of the, the hardness, the rebellious hardness of the human heart. And they're the waters that have to do with the uncanny evil that stalks us, the darkness within and the darkness without. Are we... We with them, do not let your hearts be troubled. He's talking to his disciples as they stand on the edge of that bank. And he's about to say to them, I'm going to make a way. I'm going first, and I'm going to make a way for you. And I'm going to come back and get you. And their hearts are troubled because they see him going to a, they know it's a confrontation. They know it's a final confrontation. But where are the angels? Where are the army? They see no weapons. It's literally the, the naked word of God that's going to make the way, that's going to defeat the darkness within and the darkness without. He's nothing else but the seeking, searching, sacrificial love of God. And he's going to that final co confrontation and he's going to be immersed in the waters of darkness, the, the waters that threaten to drown us, that, that well up both within and, and that come at us from without. Do not let your hearts be troubled. As Joshua led the people, God again made a way out of no way. Again, he's going to make a way out of no way. Joshua, Joshua led the people through. I'm going to lead you through. I'm going to go first and I'm going to make a way for you. I'm going to come back and get you and lead you through. Um, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And it's identifying himself with the Father. Now he says, in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. The old King James said mansions, and you get many translations for this. The actual word here is the word for tent. And uh, it's a word, you know, like this happens over and over again in the Bible. There's a word and there's a whole story behind the word and you have to know the whole story to know what the word means. Moses comes down from the mountain. He has the two tablets, the holy and a righteous way of life. Live this way and never be slaves again. And then he says, he says to them, build a tent. And you're, it's going to have three parts to it. One, two, three. 
And in the Holy of Holies, there'll be the Ark of the Covenant. And on top of the Ark of the Covenant will be the mercy seat where the priest goes once a year to make a reconciliation between God and his people. And this tent of meeting, this tent, will be the abiding place, will be the place where God abides with his people and where the people come to abide with God. Now, St. John has made it very clear for us that the tabernacle and the temple were good, but the better is here. Tear this temple down and now rebuild it in three days. The, the mercy seat, the meeting place, the abiding place is now in Jesus Christ the Lord. He's, he's come from the Father to bring us to the Father. He is the place where a holy and a righteous God and a hard-hearted and rebellious humanity meet and are joined and where God abides with us, and we abide with God. Now, there are many dwelling places. It's a reference to the, how the tent of meeting led them through the wilderness. Right? He's going now, in this final immersion, to conquer with his sacrifice of love the darkness within and the darkness without, and to bring forth from the grave a new life in the power of the Spirit, and in him, in, by, and through him, now is the dwelling place of God with us and of us with God. It's bought at great price. It comes in the power of the resurrection. It comes by the gift of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and he's come from the Father, and he's come back to bring us back to the Father. And, and like, 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 he, like he led the people through the desert, he'll lead us. And there'll be many dwelling places. There'll be many congregations. There'll be many celebrations of the Holy, Holy Eucharist. There'll be many times when two or three are gathered in his name, and there he is abiding in the midst of them. And they're abiding in him. And there'll be the final uh, dwelling place. He prepares a place for us. Uh, they know he can do this. When they came into the city, he said, go and follow this man. He'll take you to the room that is prepared. And there they did abide with him, and he did abide with them, and so he does every time we break the bread and bless the wine. And then he says these words, that are difficult for contemporary people. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Immediately we begin to ask about, well, what about the protect practitioners of other religions? What about good and decent people that have no particular religion? Um, for some reason our minds go immediately to speculation. And we begin to think of it in this way. Uh, is it a test? And if we believe in the right God and the right, the right religion, then God will reward us. If we believe in the wrong religion, then God will punish us. No, that's not how it works. If you want to read some very sane and sober words about this, read the Vatican document Lumen Gentums. It talks about how the followers of other religions might indeed be saved. But that's not the belief that's being talked about here. The belief that's being talked about here is this kind of belief. A man is drowning, and someone comes and reaches out his hands and says, take my hand. I can save you. Believe me. That's what it's like. It's trust. Faith, uh, the theologian Leslie Newbegin says, faith is where the wherewithal we reach out and, 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 and make and, and, and grab hold for ourselves of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Believe in me, trust in me, take my hand. Do not let speculation about someone else stand between you and the hand that is outstretched to you. Between you and the one who says, do not let your heart be troubled. 
believe in God. Believe also in me. I make a dwelling place for you. I've gone and prepared a place for you, and I've come to bring you back to it. Now, at the end of this gospel, a very remarkable thing is said. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will do also the works that I do. In fact, will do greater works than I do. Jesus says to us, we will do greater works than he does. It's an astonishing thing. Well, how can that be? Who, in his walk, in, when he was walking in Palestine, who was it that, that did abide with him? What, what, were they thousands? Were they tens of thousands? I don't know. How many down through the years and in the years to come will be able to abide with him? Because two or three come together in his name and he fulfills his promise. How many will be able to abide with him when we obey his command with the bread and with the wine? How many will abide with him in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and walking in the good works that he has prepared for us to walk in, millions upon millions upon millions. And so this is a call to us that we should trust in him and abide in him in such a way that we make it possible for others to abide. For others to reach out and grasp the hand that is offered to them and to answer I believe to the one who says, come unto me. Come unto me. And I will refresh you and make you well. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all visible and invisible, and in one Lord, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the virgin host of the Virgin Mary, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall not have no end. And I believe the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually 
the universal church, with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our primate, Michael, our assisting bishop, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and Leander, our dean, that they may, both in their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. We also pray for our sister cathedral in this city, the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, and for their clergy and people, especially Edward, their bishop, and David, their rector. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, Kathleen, our governor, and Kathleen, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace. So to follow the good examples of Blessed Mary, the ever-Virgin Mother of God, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Almighty God, who rulest over all kingdoms of the world and dost order them according to thy good pleasure, we yield thee unfeigned thanks for that thou hast been pleased to set thy servant, King Charles of the United Kingdom, upon the throne. Let thy wisdom be his guide, and let thine arms strengthen him. Let truth and justice, holiness and righteousness, peace and charity abound in his days. Direct all his counsels and endeavors to thy glory and the welfare of his subjects, and let him always possess the hearts of his people. Let his reign be long and prosperous, and crown him with everlasting life in the world to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time was grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, 
have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying, worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the perfect offering for our sins, and not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Please be seated. Um, remind you that the Holy Communion is open to all baptized persons, whatever church background. Um, and if you're not baptized, have some other reason not to receive communion. When you come forward, if you cross your arms, we'll give you a blessing. Everyone is welcome at God's altar here today. At the end of the service today, we're going to have a procession. A lot of processions in the cathedral. We ask the congregation to join. This, this one, you're going to stay put. Okay, and we're going to process over to the statue of, uh, of Mary, and uh, we have uh, uh, some prayers that have to do with crowning, uh, uh, crowning Mary. It's a, uh, May is a, a time when we give particular honor to Our Lady, as uh, we Anglicans love to say. Um, when we do that, we are brought into a deep contemplation of the mystery of the Incarnation, because Mary reminds us both that uh, he is a human being like us, having taken his flesh from her, and she reminds us also of what the angel said to her. And so we get both at the same time. Now let us offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good our vows to the Most High.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, but chiefly we are bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, O oh, glory be to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. 
when the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, for these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we, and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.
Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, did vouchsafe to give gladness unto the world, grant, we beseech thee, that we, being hopen by the Virgin Mary, his mother, may attain unto the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ our Lord.